Hi everybody, just before we start this video, I want to quickly stop off to put a little caveat for some of the rules that we're going to be playing with in these videos. Now, at the time of filming, the rules are still in alpha, I believe. So uh, uh, Yeah, definitely. Alpha, um, beta? Al uh, well, really, they're fluid. alpha, um, because that's one of the pledge levels is being able to do the beta rules. Yeah, so uh, basically what we're saying in this is, if there are any changes to the rules that you notice from the videos to the final rulebook, it is because we're playing it really early on and we're actually feeding in a little bit to the guys and some changes are happening because of it. Yeah, and if you have any comments about the rules, mm. put them in the bottom and it will help us oh, yeah, with developing yeah. the game. Yeah. Now, we always do, live, do love putting out prizes, yeah? So, we have one up for grabs and it's, it's quite the funny one, okay? So, uh, you may notice this character popping up in some of the videos. Now, I'll give you a good close look at him, like so. So, this is basically a three up of one of the characters. This is Franz, yeah? Yeah. And what we've done is, we've hidden him in some of the videos. So, this one's gonna be a little different because as well as just doing your regular comments, you're gonna have to see how many times he pops up during these videos and actually get a comment in on the final one yeah. as to how many times you think he has been in there. Now, we will only be counting from the final video because that's where you'll have had the chance to see every time that he's been in. So don't go guessing before then because you could get it wrong. And but. not including this video. Fair point. This little segment does not count, but <laughs> the prize is something very cool. So one of the pledge levels for the Fabled Realms Kickstarter is going to be a beta weekend. Mm -hmm. So basically, whenever you take that pledge, it'll allow you and a mate to come and spend a weekend learning to play Fabled Realms. Yeah. And those people that come to it will be getting what's called the beta kit, right? Yeah, they will be. So what it is, is two sets of resin miniatures, one eight full path, one dragool, one set of beta cards and uh, beta rules, yes. And the beta rules? Yes, sorry, uh, my brain went beta. <laughs> That's so, all right. The prize is not actually to come to the event because that will be a little bit silly. But whoever wins will receive that beta set so that mm -hmm. you and me can actually start getting into the game and learning to play. Yeah, and this will be months before the, the eventual release yes. of the Kickstarter product. Yes, so the question is, how many times does our big version of Franz end up hiding in a video? So. Get your comments in, and we will see you a little later. Hi everybody, I have been joined by Cad from Foreground, and we're now talking about the Legends of Fabled Realms Kickstarter. Yeah, we are. It's just around the corner, but before it kicks off, I want to have a bit of a chat with you and find out what exactly is coming in the Kickstarter. What should people be excited about, Cad? Well, the first thing that's coming in is the very first starter sets. So that will be the Eightfold Path mm -hmm. um, and the Dragoi. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that, you're going to get your starter set. You're going to get an A4, uh, A5 rule book, mm -hmm. a little one that just covers the rules of the game. Yeah. You're going to get um, your dice. So you get nine whites, six blues, three reds. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll figure out how those work a little later. Yeah. Uh, you get um, your A6 character pad, so you can create your own characters. Mm -hmm. And you get your ability cards and your character cards that will allow you to play the game straight out of the box. Okay, so uh, the important thing for this is, this is a world that you guys have created over years and years and years yes, of role is. playing. And now people are starting to get to jump in and tell their own stories in it. Yeah. So uh, one of the things you have is actually a map. And it's a very beautiful map, I have to say. So Thank this you. is the world of the Fabled Realms then, yeah? It is, yeah. Um, this, this is the uh, lo local area around the Tudor League. Mm -hmm. um, we're set, this game period is kind of set in uh, Daldor and Langerholm, this so area up here. Ah, so right up in the middle of the map, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, right, we're starting, where is our jump off point? What's happening in the world at the minute? Okay, so what's happening in the world is it's actually in a time of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, the last big war was a, a tu in the Tudor League. Mm -hmm. the, um, it, they reshuffled who was in charge. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they've had a, a long period of quiet. Mm. Um, and then people have started going missing in Daldor uh -huh. again. Again. Again, this is, the, this is the third time it's happened. Every time they, they, they get rid of the people that, all of the Dragoi that live mm -hmm. there, they feel. Yeah, uh, but people have started going missing again, mm -hmm. and uh, the the governor of the local area is getting concerned. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, one of the Eightfold Path commanderies, that's their base camps, mm -hmm. has been raided by a Sellsword Guild unit, mm -hmm. uh, one of their companies, mm -hmm. and uh, something's gone missing. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's a, there's a couple of things that are going on in the world, yeah. and uh, 
for the Drugoi, they're just about to come back for what would be known as the third incursion. Right. Okay, now we're, we're hearing faction names and stuff here. Yeah. In this Kickstarter, how many factions are you guys hoping to get out there? Because you've mentioned the Dragoi. Yeah. You've mentioned the Eightfold Pass. So we know there's definitely two there, but are yeah. there more coming in the Kickstarter? Yes. So um, two of the stretch goal unlocks will be um, the Sellsword Guild mm -hmm. and the Mordenberg State Guard. Mm -hmm. um, the Mordenberg State Guard are a standing army. So they are more tactical on the battlefield. They, they use... Um, Ability cards to allow them to attack with two units at the same time, which is quite yeah. unique to them. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll be um, more standardized than what their their standard soldiers are equipped and armed with. Okay. Um, the Sellsword Guild, on the other hand, are everybody else. <laughs> They're the mercenaries. Um, right. So you've <coughs> got in the Sellsword Guild starter set, you're going to have an elven captain, an elven leader. Mm. Um, she's in charge of the, the starter set you have. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got an orc hero for them, who's mm -hmm. their big brute. Ah. You've got um, a gnome wizard, because normally wizards are generally gnomes in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're very magical little creatures. They are. Uh, you've got um, three goblin spearmen. Mm. So these goblins are there, and they can, they're can they very good at fighting through their friends and mm -hmm. like attacking people. Um, and then you've got two dwarven shield and axemen. Mm -hmm. So the whole war band is made up of this mixed race like conglomerate. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're a sellsword, you'll just do whatever it if takes to get there. paid. Yeah. yeah. You know, if the coin's there, we'll fight. So you'll work with anybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, which then comes across in their rules. So they're very, very good at killing people, mm. but as you see in some of the demo games, when your nerve breaks, it can mm. be very bad for you. And for cell swords, it's really bad. Oh, okay. Okay, what? They might panic or something? Yeah, they'll, you, you'll be winning, and then suddenly, with the cell swords, you're, you're a very glass cannon faction. Ah, okay. So suddenly it'll snap, and then your morale will have broken, and your men will be going, leaving you very quickly. Right, so I'm guessing then the Mordenberg State Guard, they're probably going to be a bit more regimented, a bit more hold-the-line type thing? Yeah, and they'll also um, be able to use... Uh, they get a bonus to their command, mm -hmm. so they're going to be able to do lots of sneaky things with that. So mm -hmm. some of their cards allow them to do more actions in a turn. Mm -hmm. um, that allows them to generate more momentum, which is your ability to do actions as mm -hmm. well. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're a little bit different in that regard. as regimented versus... Definitely not. <laughs> so we're going to have four factions with four factions with four very distinct playstyles by the end of the Kickstarter. You're hoping then you could end up with six. Now Ooh. you get four with minis. Okay. But what we're doing um, is we're going to do two PDF factions. Okay. So if we get to their stretch goal, the first one is the Venturers Guild. Mm -hmm. Now the Venturers Guild is um, a, literally adventurous. They mm -hmm. they go out and they find adventure and they find treasure mm -hmm. so you can create your warband and this will be a pdf warband with its own set of cards mm -hmm. its own set of rules for the legacy campaign system mm -hmm. as well as for the normal game and it'll allow you to very quickly play a game with some of the miniatures that maybe you have in your own collection already yeah, i like this yeah and then the other one does the same a similar thing the fellendorf militia mm -hmm. so the fellendorf militia what you have with them is you've got you can only hire heroes mm. But every time you turn up to the battle, uh, Fellendorf, which is the area just above Daldor, so Fellenberg is just up there. Uh, yeah, just along the mountain range on the left-hand yeah. side. Yeah, okay. And uh, what they have is they have um, a, a, a system of levy. Mm -hmm. So you turn up with your, your, your heroes. Mm -hmm. You don't know how many henchmen you're going to get. Right. You roll a d6 per hero. Right. And then that many henchmen turn up. But if right. you want to make money... You have to send some of them back to the fields. Right, so these are sort of like feudal lords. They are. You know, call, calling in the, the banner men, and it's just like, oh, wait, we, we, we kind of need to eat this month, so yeah. you, 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 and you, you're going to go back and work the fields. You, 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 and you, you're coming with me. There's a scrap over here I need help with. Yeah, so you've got that, that risk-reward of, mm. if I take the 30 henchmen into the battle, I might win the battle. But my warband can't buy any more equipment. It can't buy yeah, any more starve. armor. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you don't yeah. know what's going to happen afterwards. Yeah. 
Okay, so it, it sounds like this is going to be a full, full-on game whenever it's done. It's yeah. going to have everything you're going to want to play. You're going to have everything you need to play, including the fact that you guys actually do the buildings for the world. Yeah. So the two building sets I've got here. This is Brogan Bridge, mm -hmm. which is um, in Daldor. Well, if you if you pass yeah. it here, because this is one you guys had at Salute that you were showing off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that one wasn't at Salute. Wasn't that? Oh, this was... is this is the one that's ah, at Salute. My bad. That's all right. All right. Well, Let's get a, a little gander at this. So this is one that you've talked to me about before, where they've taken one of the ruins of Daldor and actually built a wooden structure into it. Yeah, so this one is... Um, it, it's the, the area where the people that are now back in Daldor live. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's across... Uh, there's a bridge that leads between what is now known as Brogan Bridge and the main city of Daldor. Uh -huh. So Brogan Bridge itself is almost a complete city. That's where the local governor lives, the one that's very concerned about the people going missing. Mm -hmm. Um, and this this is one of the stretch goals is for a range of the range of buildings to do a Brogan Bridge. Yeah, now I, I like the idea of Brogan Bridge because there would be people who would be like, "Oh, that that land's cursed. You can't go in there." But there's treasure. Yeah, and it, it's um, kind of imagine something a bit like Moss Eisley mm. meets the Wild West. <laughs> um, so there's just. People of uh, disrepute all over the place, mm. uh, as well, well as the local one thing. You've actually built in latches for the doors? Uh, yeah, so that's to barricade your door up at night, because the last thing you want is a, a nice little glutton wandering in. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, he wanders in, I'm, I'm cold, I'm hungry. No, 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 you're, you're, you're a dragoon, get the hell out of here. Stab, <laughs> yeah. it, stab it, burn it, kill it with fire. So that's, uh, and that's why it's got the crane on the outside, because ah. the, the downside, downstairs door, uh -huh. um, there's no actual stairs up, there's just a ladder. Uh -huh. yeah. So if you've got something heavy, you need to winch it up. Mm -hmm. So um, when they're living there, the downstairs is sort of like a larder mm -hmm. and for storage, and the upstairs is where you live, because mm -hmm. if a Dragul does get in, yeah. they can't get up to you. Yeah, but they might eat your supplies, or are the Dragul really just into meat, meat, meat? They're mainly into meat, meat, meat. Mm. Uh, you, you can't find any vegan Dragul. <laughs> So, okay. Well, I am noticing one thing with this, if I call it up again. So yeah. you've got a door here. Yeah. And you've actually got the, the keys from the ruins. So does this key straight into the, uh, the Daldor ruins? It does key straight into the Daldor ruins. So, right, so you could have like a nice long little pathway coming up yeah. this down, which is from steps. That's you really can make cool. a whole little, uh, you can make a whole fortification. Mm. And uh, there'll be uh, two to three buildings mm -hmm. um, as part of the stretch goal unlock. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll be coming out to people that use, there'll be a, an add-on mm -hmm. after they've unlocked. Yeah. So anybody that gets them, they'll be getting it with their, their Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. That's that's really, really cool. I love this idea that, it, of course, people would come back into the area and yeah. know, try and mine for the, the treasure of the ancients and stuff that are in the world. And it's just like, it makes sense. Yes. And it lets me build a table that I'm going to be able to tell stories in that location of the world, which is really cool. Which is where the second set of buildings come in. This is another one of the stretch goals. This is Langerholm. Okay. So you can see it's on stilts. That's because it's there. They are in uh, the centre of a lake. Mm -hmm. um, there's a sandbank in the lake, which means that you can build upon it. The stilts mm -hmm. don't go down forever. All right. Um, and with this one, it's once again so you can actually be in somewhere that's a location within the world. Ah. Because uh, Langerholm is the next province over. I see. Hello. There was one thing your your dad showed me at uh, Salute. So yeah. You see this uh, stairwell in here, everybody. So if I take this out of the way for a second and say I want to actually put my balcony on the other side, what I can do is I can take the trap door, switch where the staircase is. Right, now, you're looking at me going, Justin, you're mad that doesn't match up. I spin it round and the staircase matches up again. So you can actually get some real nice variation into these buildings. Which you is can. Nice. And um, we'll have already released the dock side mm. range, which is a load of dock pilings and they interact directly with the building so you can actually have your whole street yeah i like the fact that you've got a little boat port here yeah <laughs> you can just sail right in and you know you're in your house and you're pretty safe from the dragoon in langerholm they, they can't swim uh they can't swim and they're not undead so they can't just walk across the bottom <laughs> they they do drown okay um in fact in the first incursion the people of langerholm were pretty safe unfortunately for the people of mordenberg uh yeah yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the, the Dragul were probably at the lakeside going, oh, we can't get there, there's food over here, let's go. Exactly. <laughs> Follow the horde of refugees. <laughs> so um, you've got those. Um, mm -hmm. We're also doing Kickstarter exclusive miniatures. Oh, lovely. So the basic pledge level, you mm -hmm. get Stoic. Now, if you've seen the Stoic arms, mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's the guy that the pub's named after. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be a bit unique in the fact that he is a fast dwarf. Right. Uh, so and, oh, 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 oh. dwarves are natural sprinters. I've seen this from D and D. They yeah. are natural sprinters. Well, he's also a natural wall runner. Ah. Uh, so he's he's got some cards and abilities that allow him to run across the tops of buildings and things like that. Okay. Uh, he's also got a crossbow pistol that's got six shots in it. <laughs> so, uh, so he can just go. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, as he goes. Um, He's one of the Kickstarter exclusives. Uh, with our Kickstarter exclusives, it's the sculpt that's exclusive. Right. Um, this is so that anybody that decides not to back the Kickstarter, they're I not penalised in game terms. Yeah. But they do, if anybody that does back the Kickstarter has this nice, unique miniature that nobody will ever be able to get. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that playoff between the two, so people don't necessarily feel left yeah. out, and the people that do do it... Yeah. Get so what, tasty. The, the Kickstarter one is Stoic during his younger adventuring days and there'll be an older version of Stoic later or something like uh, that? Or there will just... be, although at the time that this is set, he's dead. So... Oh. oh, so we're playing with a dead man. You're okay. playing with a dead man. But right. it, uh, well, you... dead dwarf. Yeah, dead dwarf. Uh, there's also going to be uh, Dragos, who's the guy that actually owns the pub in his younger days. Right. And you will get a Dragos eventually as an older Dragos, which will be the standard figure. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to get... McVillan and Tigman, who are the guys that are in... If you've ever read the little fluff bit at the start, mm -hmm. they're the guys that meet the person at the docks to tell him about Mordenberg. Okay. Um, but there's, there's a load of characters coming out. Uh, they're mainly Kickstarter-exclusive mm -hmm. miniature sculpts. Right. Um, including some of the City Watch guys that will be a bit like... Uh, uh, not Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, Laurel and Hardy. So you'll get like a little tall one and a little short one <laughs> with their spears looking very glum. Um, so... It, yeah, as it goes, you'll get these exclusive miniatures. Mm -hmm. um, we're also doing something, a couple of things different with our Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do, you know, normally you can get, say, like low level and high level backers. Yeah. What we're doing is instead of doing it based on the pledges, yeah. if you pledge over a certain amount during the Kickstarter, right. uh, you become automatically a high level backer. So All right, let, let, me, let me just run through the chain on this just so I make sure yeah. I understand it and everyone understands. Right, so say I've jumped into the Kickstarter. Yeah. I said, I love the look of the Dragoi. I'm going to get that starter faction. Yes. Am I a high level backer? You're not at that point. Right. So you need to spend £200 mm -hmm. um, as part of the Kickstarter. Uh -huh. But you've backed for the Dragoi. You did £40. Yeah. Right. Uh, we, we're going to be doing um, a lot of stuff to do with our terrain as well as add ons. Uh -huh. So you go, I want to buy some terrain. Mm -hmm. I want to buy a few pieces. That's. Yeah, give another, yourself a nice 4 by 4 table to go along with my game. Yeah, say it's another £100 worth of that. Um, I'm going to buy 8 for pass so me and a friend can play. Yeah. And I'm going to buy some rule books and just whatever you buy up right. to £200. So basically you can pledge and then just stick on add-ons until you hit that high level, high level backer rank. Yeah, and if you're a high level backer at that point, mm. you unlock everything that high level backers get. Right. So you don't have to worry about, oh, well, I don't want to do that pledge because they've included certain things that I don't want. Mm. Create your own pledge. Yeah. So do the one pledge, £40, for the starter set and Stoic. Yeah, and then just build and in then your terrain add-ons until you're there. Yeah, and okay, you can... I like, I like this idea. Yeah, so it, it will hopefully mean that people don't feel that they're left out. Mm. Um, and it means that you, you can make your own pledge. Yeah. All right, now here's the important question then for yeah. that. Say I've jumped in during the Kickstarter. Yeah. I've done my starter set. Kickstarter's now over. Are you doing a pledge manager? We are doing a pledge manager. Right. So I've done my initial step yeah. in. I'm now in the pledge manager. Can I then upgrade myself to a higher level backer? You can't, because the idea is that it's to reward the people that pledge during the, pl the actual campaign itself. Right. Um, uh, because it means that there are more unlocks for those people. Right. So it's only for the high level backers, the high level backer stretch goals yeah. during the Kickstarter. Yeah. So, okay. and, and it's just so that you get that feeling during the thing of, um, we want to unlock this is, next is bit. Is that reward? Yeah, it's a reward for mm. every one of the unlocks. Yeah, okay, I like this idea because it, it, it's sort of giving people that impetus to jump in and, and do more for the game to actually yeah. help, it, help it grow faster. Because that's what this is really about, is yeah, getting um, the game out there and growing it faster. We've got the sculpts. Mm. We could produce two factions. Mm. Um, the reason we want to do it is so we can produce... We feel that a fantasy game works very well with at least four factions. Yes. So we want to produce the four factions in miniature. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to build a community. Mm -hmm. Now, Kickstarter is really, really good for building communities. You'll see yep. that if you get a lot of pledges on your Kickstarter, they're already talking about the game. They're t they want to get involved, mm -hmm. and they want to help you create something. Yeah, you see, this is the thing, and it's, it's what I keep saying to people. Anytime this comes up on the shows, 
this is your world, but now you're letting everyone else in. Yeah. And I'm sure people are just chomping at the bit to actually get in and start telling their stories. It's also what I love about the fact that you're doing the, the two PDF factions as well, because say me and a mate jump in, and our yeah. other mate has uh, other miniatures from another range, whatever, and it's just like, oh, wow, that, that game looks looks really fun. I, I kind of want to join you guys. Well, here you go. Here's a PDF. Come and join us. Yeah, you know, definitely. Learn Come and play with us. And uh, for us, it's great. We, we want you to want to buy our miniatures because you think they're the best miniatures, mm -hmm. not because we're a company that's saying you have to use our miniatures. Yeah. Like, it almost is sometimes a disadvantage to you, isn't it? That you're so rigid. Mm. You see, it, it lets people... It even, it's something that some people do. It's that sort of try before you buy thing. I can yeah. test the system. I can have a look at how it plays. Do I think the mechanics work well? Is this my style of game? Yeah. Is it playing to my play style? Are me and my mates having fun back and forth across the table? And honestly, from what I've seen of this game so far, the answer is quite simply, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, uh, we're going to be doing a, a ton of videos for this uh, particular Kickstarter guys so what the plan at the minute is this is basically what's coming in the Kickstarter give you an idea of what's going on mm -hmm. what we also have is we're going to be doing some demo games some training matches some grudge matches and sort of a futures chat what what the guys are hoping to do with the world after everything's over and done with because this is only the beginning let's yeah. be honest here this is this is that that beautiful mind of ah oh, <laughs> my story is on the tabletop but the story never ends. No, uh, and we're hoping it will be a living story as well. Mm. So that, based on player feedback, mm -hmm. uh, Broken Bridge may fall. Ooh. So that's what we want. Before the next book, mm -hmm. which we are intending to do, and we'll talk about in the future, yeah, yeah. the story, we don't have it planned. The mm. story can change, and that will all be based on the feedback we get from players. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I like that fact as well, that, that players can actually have an impact on the story. Definitely. There, there are games out there where it's, the story is the story is the story. Yes. And then there's other games like this where it's just, oh, the story is the story. But, uh, you know, if we're getting a ton of feedback saying, yeah, the, the the ghoul, they have been munching everybody. Oh, well, they're, clearly they're going to expand across this, this world map. Yeah. And then that could end badly for everybody involved. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. So uh, just one other thing I have here. You have another yeah. image for me, which is actually the faction logo. So who's who here? Uh, so the top left. To me, looking at yep, it, yep. sorry, no, uh, top right to right. you at home. No, 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 it's top left. Uh, top left, sorry, um, is the Eightfold Path. Uh -huh. So they're the Holy Militant Order. Mm -hmm. uh, they aren't necessarily the good guys. Yeah. But as far as not being eaten by the Dragul, they're definitely the good guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, like, this, this is the thing. Uh, I'm sure if there's a Dragul horde sighted on the horizon, there's at least one messenger going, is there an Eightfold Path camp nearby? Yes, go get them. They're going <laughs> to yeah. take care of it for us. Thank you. Um, All right, next up. The next up is the symbol for the Dragul. It's mm -hmm. actually the symbol for the old Dorian race. Mm -hmm. But what's happened is a lot of the Dragul um, and the Dragoi, they um, repurpose armor. All right. uh, the Dragul don't. Sorry, that's my mistake. <laughs> uh, the Dragoi repurpose armor. Mm -hmm. um, so they wear the symbol a lot. Yeah. So the people of the world now think this is a symbol for Dragoi. All right. Well, we, we will get a little deeper into those two factions because yes. those are the, the two that we're really going to be playing with in the future video. Yeah. Who else do we have here for the uh, other We've two? got um, bottom left is Sellsword Guild. Uh -huh. uh, these guys are um, mercenaries. Mm -hmm. um, you can use their warband to create bandits as well if you want to. Oh, um, oh don't tempt me. Yeah, they're... they're they're the guys that will do whatever it takes for the money in the end. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why sometimes they decide the money isn't enough. Yeah, and just say, nope, not, not today, folks. This village has not paid us enough to, to kill all these Dragul. Yeah. All right, and the last one, Mordenberg State Guard, yeah? Yeah, the last one is Mordenberg State Guard. So that's the symbol for the State Guard themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the um, four major cities you can see on the side. Ah, so that's the, the four pips? Yeah, the four pips. Uh -huh. uh, it's got the laden cog of Mordenberg, mm -hmm. and that's because Mordenberg is a trade port, of so they're, they're all symbology to do with the city itself. Yeah. You see, this, this really has me excited, because it, it sounds like a world that I can just dive headfirst into. Yeah. You know, and you know, find like my feet. Although, the one thing I will say is, see having that map, mm -hmm. that is a big plus for this game, because uh, whenever you've talked to us before, you've talked about Tudenberg, Daldor, Mordenberg, yeah. and I'm, I'm just thinking, yeah, but I, I can't really orientate myself within the world. As soon as I have this map, it's just like, ah, so they're up in the east, they're down in the west, ah. And if you're one of the high-level backers, you will get a big copy of the map. Oh, you're kidding me. No, it's one of the stretch goals, but yeah, it'll be free to the, we're calling them Guildmaster right. levels, uh, the Guildmaster level pledges. Fantastic. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to seeing this uh, Kickstarter go live. I'm really hoping everybody out there jumps in because 
it's a fantastic world that the guys have created and it's some beautiful miniatures that you're going to be able to lay your hands on not to mention the as always fantastic terrain that these guys make so uh cat i think is that everything yeah and that's it all right well thank, thank you, you very mate. much good luck on the kickstarter thank you <laughs> Uh, we will be back later, guys, with more content for the Legends of Fabled Realm. So stay tuned, keep your eyes peeled, and we will see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming Let's Plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe, and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.